So to study the hydrostatic forces, you should be able to determine the resultant force of this hydrostatic force or the resultant hydrostatic force and the center of pressure. And basically the center of pressure is the location where the hydrostatic force acts. So it can act on vertical surface, horizontal or inclined surface. So before getting into the background, which is a little bit complicated, let's like sketch a very simple chart to understand what is the concept behind hydrostatic forces overall. So just imagine that we have a cubic tank, something like that, which you have also. I will try to draw that in 3D so you can imagine what we are working with. And this is also like another wall. And we have, of course, you understand that these hidden lines are the lines that are in the back. I can see them. And this tank is full of water. So this is the water elevation inside this tank. Great, so when we say hydrostatic forces, we would like to calculate the force that acts on any side of these sides. Maybe I'm interested in this wall. So I would like to get or to measure the force that acting on this wall. So I can design the wall because I won't be able to design it to determine the thickness if I don't have the force that acts on it. Great, so there are two related things here and you should be able to differentiate between. The first one, we have the water pressure and we have the pressure force. And these are two different things. The first one, which is the way to determine the pressure force is the water pressure itself. So just imagine that I am sitting at this point. I have like a sensor at this point and this sensor tells me the pressure at a certain point. So it will say that the pressure at this point equals zero. While for this point, it will say that the pressure has a certain value. So how does this sensor get the pressure for me? So the pressure equals gamma multiplied by h. So what is gamma? Gamma is the unit weight of water, which is 9810 Newton per meter cube. This is constant for, for the fluid. It's something like the water density. So in case if you are dealing with water, which is the case, this will be the gamma of the fluid. Okay, what about H? In this case, H is the distance between the water surface and the point that you are interested in. So this point, at this point, the pressure was equal to zero because actually the distance is zero. There is no distance between the surface. This point is exactly at the surface. While in this point, the pressure has a value because I am this distance far from the water surface. Easy, right? Great, so at this point, I know what, what is the pressure, uh, the water pressure. So, of course, this water pressure will result somehow in a pressure force. And because this is the area that I am interested in, I would like to know the force that is applied to this area or to this section. So just let's call this surface or this wall as active surface. So now I am referring to this wall as active surface. Why it's active? Because the water touches it 
like starting from the bottom to the top. So how can I get the force on this surface, FP? FP basically is the pressure multiplied by the area of this section. So I said before that the pressure is variable. It starts at zero at the top of the surface and it, reach, it reaches P at the end. So which value of pressure should I take? So any ideas? Someone is saying the average. Any ideas, guys? Which one should I use? Actually, you're correct. In this case, we should use the average. But it's not actually the average. It should be the pressure at distance called H bar. And this H bar is the center between the water surface and the centroid of the section. It was the average in this case because I am dealing with rectangular active surface and the centroid of the rectangular active surface is exactly in the middle, right? So it is exactly at h over 2. It's between, or it's in, in the middle between 0 and uh, the bottom. So now, just to differentiate between the normal equation that can I use to calculate the pressure, we usually put this bar here to refer to the pressure at the centroid. Easy? Any questions? Okay, so this, this is a quick introduction and it will, it will be very useful then just reading the background. So now we understand everything, but there's also one more thing we didn't cover. Now I got FB and to do that, or to simplify, simplify this equation, it will be equal to gamma h bar then the area. So, and the area is basically the area of this section. If it is a rectangular section, if it has width b and height h capital, then the area will equal to b multiplied by h. Right? Nice. So, where do you think the other variable that we are interested in, which is the location? Where do you think the location of this force? Of course, any force acts in a certain location. So where is the location of this force? Which we call YCB, the center of pressure. Any ideas? Yep. It's something like that. As you said, it will be acting in the centroid of the shape of the pressure prism. You're right. This is exactly what I meant. But to put that in a simpler way, again, just don't get confused between the center of pressure and the centroid of the section. Why is that? Because the centroid of the section or the centroid of the area is exactly between the bottom and the top. It's in the middle location. Okay, what about the force? Would it act in the middle of this section? Actually, it won't. It will act in another location. So where is that location? So we will do that just for fun right now, and we will do it using the equations later, okay? So the pressure on this surface will look something like that. It will be like a rectangular shape. This is the pressure. These arrows that I am drawing right now, it starts at zero at the top and it ends at B equals something, whatever. So I know that there is a force acting on the surface and this force came from the pressure 
and I would like to know where is the location of this force. Is it here? Or is it here? Is it exactly in the middle? Is it lower than that? Is it at the end? So where is the location? So what your friend has just said that it will act in the centroid of the prism. So because now of the centroid of the rectangular section, because I have a pressure that looks like a rectangle, it would act exactly at the centroid of this rectangle. So can you tell me what is the centroid of the rectangle? Of course. Below the center, below the middle. Exactly. I can get that from two equations. The first one is by knowing the centroid of the rectangle, which is one third the height. One third the height or two-thirds the height from the top point. This is the way that we, you can do it without even having this course. But because you are, have, you are studying fluid mechanics, we will show you how to get that both mathematically and, to, and like experimentally. So now you understood the whole concept. So let's walk through the background. Again, we are interested in getting the resultant force due to pressure, Fp, and the centroid of the pressure, Ycp. And here it shows you the same approach. First thing, this is the equation to calculate the pressure. This is the equation that we can substitute with the pressure to calculate the pressure force. And H bar is the vertical distance to the centroid of the surface of interest which we call do you mind that do you remember that what was the name of the surface of interest it was the active surface great so as you have just said we have different approaches to calculate ycb the first approach is by using this equation which Dr. Bukefa derived with you during the lecture. Or you, have, you can use the approach that we are going to do today. So let's go through this equation very fast because you will have to calculate that uh, and submit it in your uh, lab report. We have three different parameters here. We have I bar, which is the area moment of inertia for the section that you are working with. We, are, we have y bar, which is the slant distance. And of course, you have the area. So I is something related to the section. If it is a rectangular section, you will get the moment of inertia of this section. If it is circular, if it is triangular, it depends on the section you are working with. So someone might ask, can we work with any other shape than a rectangular section? I can, I can actually use this prism as a tank. It's a little bit weird and you, you won't see that uh, very much, but what if the tank looked something like that? So, and this is the water level. So what if you are working with like a, pris a prismatic tank? This is valid. And the inertia that you are going to calculate is the inertia of the base or of the surface that you are interested in. So this I corresponds to the shape of the surface. Nice, so regardless the way that you are going to calculate I, this is not important, but something to note here that because you are using different parameters or there's an equation with different parameters, you should keep in mind using uniform units. I said that previously and I also 
so some students like missing out on the dayonis, which wasn't actually good in uh, like a new way. So please keep in mind working with uniform units and we will see an application for that in a while. So let's get to the equipment. We are going to use the adjustable angle hydrostatic pressure apparatus that that is in front of you here, this one, and because this lab will be divided into two sections or two parts, the first part will going to will be going to the theoretical approach, the calculation steps, and also the questions. I won't stress a lot about or I won't stress on the equipment because at the second part you will come home and you will come closer to see everything in person so I will go do that so just for the moment know that this is the equipment that we are going to use this equipment has the same active surface if you remember we refer to that as active surface of course the equipment has its own active surface and the dimensions of this active surface is 75 in width and 100 in height. So you will have to record these two values. Great, so this is the equipment and it has maybe like five, four or five main bulbs. The first bulb, which is shown as one here, is something called the moment arm. The moment arm, you can adjust this handle wherever you want. You can put it in this location, this location, you can do whatever you want. The second component is the weights. I can attach weights to this equipment. The third and the fourth equipments or the, four, the third and fourth point here is the water vessel itself, which you can add water in it. And the, the fifth point is the rotational point or the rotational axis. Why we call that rotational axis? Because, of course, the equipment can rotate. So it rotates on this point. So we call that as the rotation axis. The last thing, which is very specific, and you can see that from very far, is point number seven, which is the stop pin. So I will leave that for the second part, okay? Just to save your time. Okay, what is the point, or what is the concept behind this experiment? Why are you are doing that? We are doing that to get FP and YCB. So how? Or what is the idea? The idea actually is by using the moment balance equation. I'm not sure if you if you have any experience with balancing the moments or not. It's something not related to fluid mechanics, but it's a general concept that you can use. And the moment in general is a force multiplied by a distance. So if I have a certain force and multiply it there by the distance where it acts, then I will have a moment. And you can see that here. We have two forces and two distances. The easy part or the easy force is the gravitational force, the gravity force. And this gravity force is the force that pulls the weights down, which acts toward the gravity. And this force is applied far from the rotational axis, and this distance is I. And just to remind you guys, we have I bar and I. If you would like to go to the bathroom and wash your face. Okay. Nice. So now we know where or what is the right side of this equation. Okay, what about the other side? The other side is the pressure force that you are interested in multiplied by another distance called J. 
So as we said, we have to get FP and YCB. So where is YCB in this equation? If you take it short, YCB lies inside the J value. You will see that J equals something plus YCP. So if he was able to get J, we will be able to get YCB easily from J. So this is the concept behind the experiment that we are going to make balancing between two moments. And these are the two moments. And actually, the step or the experiment itself is very easy. But the concept behind the experiment is a little bit harder. So do you have any question before getting into the experiment? Sure. Nice. So there are three elevations we have to measure before getting into the calculation. The first elevation is the water surface elevation. So imagine that while doing the experiment, that was the water surface. I'm sorry, this is not the water surface. This is the water surface. So the water surface elevation, we refer to that as S. There are two other elevations that you should measure. The first one is the elevation of the bottom of the active surface. Here we have the active surface. And this is the bottom of the active surface. So we will have to measure the elevation of that using this marker. And we will also have to get the elevation of the top of the active surface, which we call SH. So why we are doing that? Why we are interested in these three elevations? In Actually, we are interested because the equations that we are going to use will be different. In case if I have this configuration, when the water surface is below the top of the active surface, this will be the situation. On the other hand, if S is larger than SH, this will be the situation. And these two situations are different actually. And each one has its own equations that we can use. So we will see that in a while, but just keep in mind that we, in general, we have two cases. And based on the case, you will use the equation that corresponds to, to it. So do you remember I bar? Do you remember the moment of inertia? The moment of inertia of a rectangular section is very easy. It is 1 over 12 multiplied by the width of this rectangular section and the height to the power 3. Nice. So I have a question here. What will be the units of I bar? What will be the units of the moment of inertia? Exactly. It would be length of a pole. Why is that? Because I know that B is length. It is the width. So it's length. It's not time. It's not mass. And the width height is also length. This one by one, this one by two. So the total units will be length by four. So just for example, let's consider this to be meter by four, meters by four. So why I am stressing on that? Because this equation. This equation you will have three parameters i with the units of meter bar four, y bar, typically it would be in millimeters, and area, typically it will be in millimeters square. So we should do something first before plugging in y bar, a and i bar. We should do something. What is that? You should 
unify the units either to meters or millimeters. You can decide. But don't plug numbers without considering the units. This will own your calculations. So how can I do that? So let's, we did that already the first lab. So let's do it very quick. So for me, I would like to convert from meter to millimeter so we get YCB in millimeters. So this is the final units I would like to have. So then I will have to convert meters to millimeters. Right? Great, so what is the units, or I mean, what is the conversion between, what is the conversion rate, we can say, between meter and millimeter? I should multiply by 10 to the power 3, right? But actually, I'm not converting from meters to millimeters. I'm converting from meter power 4 to millimeter power 4. So I should also put the power here. So it will look like I am multiplying by 10 to the power 12. Right? Questions? So let's do another example and it's a little bit harder. And I will do that because this equation also you will do unit conversion. It won't be like an easy task. We have gamma equals 9810 Newton per meter cubed. And again, in most cases, especially in this lab, you will have H in millimeters. And you would like to calculate the pressure. Do you think you will multiply? So, for example, if we have H of 20 millimeters. So, do you think to get the pressure, we multiply 20 by 9810 and get the result? This is totally wrong because you have different units. Specifically different length units. So you should do this conversion. And why I am saying that this one is a little bit challenging. Let's think about it. And let's convert from meter to millimeter. Again, I will multiply by 10 to the power of 3. But we have power 3 here, so I will use the power, so it will multiply by 10 to the power 9. So should I multiply 9810 by 10 to the power 9, then to and 20? And that's it, or there's also something wrong in this calculation? So should I use this conversion rate or there should be something else. Guys, please try to like focus because I did that the biggest time and I feel that I won't need to do it again. But it's very, very important, not only in fluid mechanics, this is important in every subject. Here I'm not trying to convert from meters to millimeters. Here I'm trying to convert from originally Newton bear millimeters. So millimeters here isn't the unit. It's one over millimeter square, meter cube. So again, I am not converting from meter cubed to millimeter cubed. So I shouldn't multiply by 10 to the power 9. Originally, I am converting from Newton per meter cubed, which can be Newton multiplied by 1 over meter cubed to Newton multiplied by 1 over millimeter cubed. Right? So I shouldn't forget this division. There is a division here. 
So that's why I will convert this conversion rate instead of 10 to the power of 9 to 10 to the negative 9. Because conversion, I'm sorry, uh, division can be converted to negative power. This is something, in case if you know it, it's fine. In case if you don't, here's how to work with this kind of conversion. Again, or it's very, it's clear now? Is it clear? Okay, nice. We have wasted time in that, so let's go to the, let's go to the procedure. We are going to do the experiment twice, one for alpha equals zero, one for alpha equal 50. And this alpha is the angle of the apparatus. As you can see, we can adjust the angle. So this is won't be a hard task. To do the experiment, we will go through this or these steps. The first one, of course, we will set the angle. Then we will set the moment arm distance. We have this handle. We can set the distance. Whatever you want, of course, you have to record this down. The third step is the most important one. So, why is this important? Because actually, this step is the or relates to the concept behind the experiment, which was the balancing the moments. You will see here that it starts by counterbalance the moment of to make it horizontal. Why I should make it horizontal? Because originally it's not horizontal. As you can see, it can rotate. Right? It can rotate. So there is a position where it is horizontal. And there is a position where it is aiming upward or downward. So to make it horizontal, this is called counterbalance. I am trying to balance the system. Because the whole idea of the experiment is using the moment balance. If the system is not balanced before making the experiment, this means I am not working correctly. So how can I put the system in balance? I can do that by using this weights. I can move this weight to this side so it will be heavier, or I can move this weight to the other side so it will be heavier. So how can I make sure that this is the exact position that it should be? There are two ways. The first one is by looking to this very small tip. Of course, we will do that. I'm just like going to do it very quick. There is a tip. If this tip is inside the hole, or if it's in the middle of the hole, this means that the system is wrong. So the system is bad. If this tip isn't in the middle of the hole, this means that aiming downward or upward. So this will be the balancing factor. We will talk about that in a while, but just keep that in mind. After balancing the system, you will have to get two elevations. As we said previously, we will have to calculate ST and SH. Once you do that, you have the equipment ready to work. You will have to add, or you can add, weights. And of course, each weight you will add, each weight you will add will disturb the system. Won't make it an equilibrium again, right? Because it was horizontal, it was balanced, but when you added forces, it won't be in balance again. So the whole idea will be how to get back to get back this balance. I added weights. On this side, so it's aiming, it's aiming downward. I would like to make balance again. The other way, or the only way that I can do that, is to add some weights. But instead of weights, we'll add water. And we'll stay adding water until we reach the balance state, which we, which we can remind it on the pen that will lie inside the middle. Nice. So, after, of course, after adding water, we will 
we call the water elevation and we will step or we will repeat these steps to satisfy the two conditions because we have two conditions we will do this once with the condition on the left and we will do it again to reach the second condition where the water level is above the head of the active surface Nice, so now we are done with the experiment explanation, but before making the experiment itself, because also I would divide you into four groups, and each group can leave once uh, you finish, guys. So let's go through the worksheet to make sure that you understand everything correctly. In the first, uh, the first question, it asks you to fill the results or fill the tables and to show you calculations for the first weight at alpha equals zero this time i would like you to show me your calculations only once and i mean by only once you don't need to do the calculation like some students attach their calculations like it was 10 pages file this is fine and i really appreciate that but i don't need you to do that because there are very simple calculations, you can do it on the calculator. But I would like you to I would like you to show me your, your the calculations for the first step, the first try. So after having the measurements, which we are going to do in a while, you will be able to fill the result table to get three values specifically. If p which is the pressure force, YCB theoretically, or YCB theoretically from equation number three, and YCB experimental from this, from this lab. But as you remember, we didn't, or I didn't show you any equations for the experimental YCB, right? I didn't do that. Because actually it's already here in your lab instructions. You will see in the last page that we gave you several equations of, I should say, two sets of equations. The first one, you will use that in case if you have S less than SH. Or in case if you have S more than SH, you will use the equations on you right. Okay? Nice. So actually this equation you don't have to minimize it and you actually can drive all of them but we are not going to do that right now but it's not fancy equations it's only like a relation between the different dimensions or different distances. Great. So this is the first question. What about the second one? The second one is even easier than the first one. For us. I'm not sure why. I don't think the last semester no one answered that correctly. And it, 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 it's very easy actually, but it has a, a different concept. So let's make it clear now. This one, it says here that we have a horizontal active surface which is at up, uh, alpha equal 90. The water surface is at 242 and the bottom surface is at 200 millimeters. And it wants you to calculate FB and YCB. So a quick question. Which case do you think we are here? As I said before, we have two cases. Case one, Case two, and I am asking now, in which case should we use? In case if we have horizontal surface. You, 
get that. You get that. You get that. You get that. This is very good notice. And to make it simpler, in this case, actually, you are not going to use neither point or neither case one or case two. Why? Because as your friend said, now we are working with a different case. Now we are working with a very standard situation where we have a rectangular tank full of water and we are interested in getting the pressure force on the bottom of this surface of this tank. Previously we were interested on the force we, are, we were interested in the force on the side, right? But now we are interested in the force at the bottom side, which is submerged with water. So let's put the dimensions first, so we can know how to answer that. The active surface is the same active surface of this equipment. So it has H equal 100 millimeter. And it also has a second dimension which is the width, which is B, 75 millimeters, right? Nothing new now. Great, so, and here's the elevations. We have the water surface elevation at 242. The ST elevation, and just to remind you, in this case, ST, equal sh right because the surface is horizontal st equals sh and both are equal to 200 so how can i get the pressure force in this case so let's start by thinking about the pressure itself what do you think the pressure will be on the active surface would be would it be like uniform or would it be variable it would be uniform why because the distance between the water surface and any point on this surface is the same h is the same so the pressure will be uniform so here is the pressure and it is uniform so what is the value of the pressure? Can you tell me? Gamma H. Why? Because gamma is the because we are dealing with water, it would be gamma for water multiplied by H. And what is H small? It is the distance between the water surface and the surf and the surface itself. So it's very easy because gamma it's 9810 after doing this conversion to convert it to millimeter I multiply that by negative 9 while H will be the difference between these two levels you can get the pressure easy okay what about the force actually we are interested in the force not the pressure force the pressure force equals the pressure multiplied by H. It's something. It's pressure at the centroid. So what will be this pressure at the centroid, guys? Is it the same? Yes, it's the same. Why? Because the centroid of this section lies somewhere at this location. It might here, here, here. It's it's somewhere here. So H bar is still 242 minus 200. So we already got B, and we multiply this B by the area, which is 100 by 75. And you can easily get a pressure force. So what about the center of pressure? Can someone tell me where is the center of pressure? Let's first decide how it acts, like in which direction. Does it act 
downward to the side downward exactly because I am interested in this surface so the force will be acting to it so it will be down so this is the force of pressure so where, where does it act exactly it acts at the centroid of the pressure diagram so this is the pressure diagram and the centroid of the rectangular section is at the middle so it actually the pressure force will exactly act at the middle this is FP so what is the value of YCB it is 100 divided by 2 which is 50 millimeters this is YCB questions Do you think you would be able to get that before making this clarification? I, I'm sure that some of you will be able to do that, but I thought that it's better to clarify. Nice, so now I will have to divide you guys into four groups.